Welcome back to the Teen Mom OG reunion. We're now sitting with Cheyenne and Corey. Thank you, y'all. Thank you, thank you. Daddy's here, daddy's here. Cheyenne spent most of last season trying to work through her feelings with Corey and learning to co-parent with him. They've done a good job raising Ryder together. But this season, she had a new boyfriend and Corey had a new girlfriend. And that led to some complicated emotions. I'm talking to Taylor again. I mean, you knew this day was gonna come. Not with her. It's just hard thinking of somebody around Ryder that's not us. Wait, you're making me feel so much more comfortable. So me and Taylor, we go to Tulum, right? And I get a text message from Shy saying, hey, Ryder, has a fever of 103. I need to get home as quick as possible. Right. At the end of the day, he wasn't there. He missed the process. She could go into shock. She can have a seizure. She could die. I am in a guy. It was so annoying. What do you think about, like, meeting Corey and stuff? I don't know. Just gonna kind of walk into it and see where it takes me. You know what, Corey, the last time I saw you two, there was a different kind of energy between you two. There was like, hey, the hooking up vibe, right? It was right? the mystery energy. We didn't know what to do with it. <laughs> yes. Are we together? Are we hooking up? Are we not? <laughs> right? There was a lot of giggling on the couch. Remember that, Dr. I Drew? I do remember that. And now Woo! it's separate ways. <laughs> and now we're in, you know, serious relationships. What happened? Yeah, I feel like for Corey and I, we went to different things, and I want to get married. I want to have more children. I want to settle down. And he's, he wasn't ready for that. I want something else. And we had to realize that we are really good friends. We're really good co-parents, but we would never be really good mates for each other. Got it. Corey, were you interested in trying to have a relationship with Shy after that time? Um... No, I mean, I've, I've stayed pretty consistent on what I've been saying. I never want to lie to Cheyenne. Right. I never want to lead Cheyenne on. At the end of the day, we're just not meant to be right now or whenever, and we just moved on. And now Corey's in a relationship with Taylor. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing mixed feelings when I'm watching it. So where are you at now? So Taylor and I had a rough beginning, mm -hmm. um, and social media and past shows haven't helped that relationship, mm -hmm. but we've sat down, hashed it out, and I've seen Ryder with Taylor, and she's really good with her, so I, I can't be mad. Good. So when you were in Mexico and mm -hmm. Ryder had pneumonia, yeah. and it seemed like the fans were upset about this. Yeah. They were slamming you online because mm -hmm. you didn't go home. Right. How did that make you feel? Um, I was hurt. At the end of the day, I told Cheyenne this too, I should have been there right away. Um, it's something that me and Cheyenne are working through. It's one of those things where I told her, for me, it's like, get your ass to the hospital, I need you here, come. I would have been there. So I didn't handle it the way that I should have handled it, I guess. And, um, you know, it's just one of those steps, me and Cheyenne figuring out this co-parenting thing and just talking about it. How are you feeling right now hearing this, Cheyenne? To me, if you're not there in the physical, then you're not gonna want to, you're not gonna know what to do for the next time. It's not gonna be the last time she's hospitalized. It's just that just how her condition works. I think when it comes to her condition, it's hard because he didn't see the first six months, and that was when it was the worst. Corey, does does her illness scare you? Do you have certain fears about it? Um, it, it scares me a little bit because it's hard to look at her and see that she has anything. Um, like if she has low energy and just the things that we're looking for, you don't know if it's, if it's her just being her or if it's actually the VLCAD kicking in or what's going on with that. You, you took a big deep breath when he was talking about that. It makes you nervous too, doesn't it? Oh, I freak out. Yeah, her and her what, mom are like. What's your biggest fear? That she'll die. Of course, I'm gonna cry. Her condition is scary and it's 10 times scary because we can't see it. It's not like a scratch or something. You don't know. We just don't know. And I hate not knowing of if she's gonna be okay. It's really rough. I worry about her constantly. I'm always beating Corey's head. What'd she eat today? What did she sleep? What, what is she doing now? And it's not because I don't trust him, but I, I don't trust what she has. 
It's hard because I wasn't there for the first six months. I mean, when you're there and you see your kid with the IV and you see the heart monitors attached to him, it mentally does something to yeah. you. But even but the I last did show day, up to the hospital. I showed you, up. When he walked in, he was like, oh, <laughs> like, you know, then he saw it. But we've been there for four or five days. It's like, I was, I didn't sleep. I couldn't, Ryder couldn't sleep, so I'm not sleeping. She's not eating, so I'm not eating. It's just hard. It's just feeling as a parent to not be able to feel like you can't protect your child from something. Like, it's just way too much to think about. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you're <laughs> stressing me out right now. But <laughs> stressing me out. <laughs> Thank you so much to Cheyenne and Corey. Give me the kisses. Yay, puppy! Your mommy good sugars. No, like this. Mm -hmm. It's your birthday! Yay! <laughs> I love my baby.